Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to FTB Interactions. So, uh, since last episode, I've been prepping up a little bit of stuff, and I decided that instead of going to the Nether this episode, I don't think we're going to go this episode or start working towards that. We might work a little bit towards that, we'll see what we get to. Actually, we might start working towards that, we'll see. But anyways, the first thing I want to do is I want to continue working up here, and I'd like to get easier, better steam. Um, you will see that I have added another uh, improved coke oven. So we have two of these that make cold coke, one that makes the charcoal. Um, because, of course, you know, we looked at last episode and it's two, it's two times faster to make charcoal than it is to make uh, cold coke. Um, over here, we have not gotten any junk yet. This has been running good and we are up to 61 stacks of mineral and then a bunch of stacks of the rest of the stuff. Um, so I don't think we're producing junk anymore, which makes me very, very happy. Um, also, this is backed up on creosote. This is backed up on creosote, creosote, and we've got uh, some cold coke here. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is, uh, first up, I've got a barrel here, and we're just going to set this up. For right now, it's just going to set right here, and it will probably get moved. We'll see. But anyways, this is going to take our cold coke and start stockpiling our cold coke for us. And I'm going to have to put um, item ducks there, there, and I'm going to have to make a couple servos for that. I'll get that here in just a second. And this has got a bit of creosote in it as well. Um, okay, so what I want to do is, uh, first and foremost, let's go ahead and make our bronze boiler. And then we'll have to get all the stuff set up uh, to plug it up. And I went ahead and prepped up a bunch of bronze plates and some bronze rods. We should just be able to get this crafted out pretty quickly. Um, and if you recall, there is a quest for this um, right here. Okay, so we're going to need all this stuff. Uh, so first up, the bronze casings. We need 23 of these. Oh, and I've got to go get my bricks. I forgot about those. I did get these uh, smelting up. I just forgot to go pick them up. So. There's 32 brick blocks. So let's go ahead and get our bronze casings. And. Oh, I hate that it does that. Uh, we needed 23 of these. Right. What did I just break? My wrench. Okay. So let me get a new one. I'm just going to get a bronze one. Uh, for now. And one more craft and we should be good. Task completed. Okay, so there's those. And then I've still got 40 bronze plates. Good. <laughs> and then I'm going to need to get six bronze firebox casings. And uh, of course, technically we have a bunch of these downstairs, but they're not uh, legit ones. And I'm going to click through these. I don't know which ones. Okay, there we go. Uh, we need this right here. And one craft should be good for that. And then we'll get our firebox casings. Oh, wait, I need more. I didn't make enough rods. Okay, let me go make... Uh, for some reason, I think I was thinking it was like two per craft or something. And while we're waiting for the lathe to finish up, we're also going to need to get uh, two bronze pipe casings. These right here, we're going to have to make ourselves, oops, well, we'll just do that. We're going to need four of these, and then there is our pipe casings. So task complete. And then we are also going to need uh, a large bronze boiler machine block, or uh, I need more 10 cables, that's fine. There's four of those, and there's that. And then we're also going, well, let me get the, uh, the bronze rods that we need. They should be done. Okay, and then we're going to need a LV input bus, output hatch, and input hatch. Input hatch. Now we're going to need a piece of glass. Okay, so there's that. And then we're going to need the output hatch. Another piece of glass. And while that glass is changing over, we're also going to need uh, an input bus. 
So that right there. And just one of those is fine. Okay, we need the output. Okay, there's the output hatch. And then we just need the firebox casings. There we go. Okay, and quest completed. Large bronze boiler. And they're going to give us eight advanced mechanical pipes, which is for fluid transfer, as well as 32 aluminum. So we'll go ahead and take those. And then this quest right here, I guess we have to do this one to unlock the basic steam turbine quest. So we'll probably just knock that out. It's not that expensive for us at this point. Um, I don't think I have any steel plates made up. I do not, but I have plenty of steel, so. Okay, so there's a high pressure steam coal boiler. And I'm just gonna throw that in there for now. And we're gonna get eight small bronze pipes. Sounds good. And then there's a quest here for the basic steam turbine. We get enriched alloy and steam spinach. We'll do that here in just a second. Um, and then there's a quest here. We're going to go ahead and turn these in. It says each of these sing single block generators produce one amp worth of power per tick at most. Conveniently enough, most single block machines in Greg Tech Community Edition accept only one amp worth of power max, with the exception of machines like thermal centrifuges. We'll go ahead and check mark that. Then overclocking generators, the math is simple. An MV generator will produce four times as much EU per tick as its LV variant, but at the same time use four times as much fuel with no fuel efficiency gained nor lost. We'll go ahead and mark that off. Okay, so now we've got all the stuff that we need to set up our boiler. Well, to build it. And then we still have to, we got to get a few things to actually set it up and get it running. Um, but anyways, let's head up here. And all our machines are going to be coming up here soon, too. I've got to make a couple servos. I'll get those here in just a second. But the question is, where do I want to set this up at? Okay, the input hatch is on that side. I don't know if I want to put my steam production over here, maybe. Have it, like, in this little area. And then pump it out uh, to maybe this area. There'll be a room that has our LV stuff. And then probably change up a lot of this floor from grass, you know. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. So let's, which we're not going to stick with steam for too long. But um, anyways, we're going to have the input hatch, input bus. Okay, so input bus. We'll set here. The input hatch will set here. Then we're going to have a uh, firebox casing there. This is a lot more firebox casings than what they had us make. Um, I'm not sure where they want the output hatch to go. Oh, right here. Okay, input hatch. Okay, the output hatch is going to set right there. And then we're going to have the controller be right there. Um, I've got to go make some more firebox casings, which I should have everything for it. I only need uh, three more. And it actually crafts three at a time, so. Okay, so there's our firebox casings. Awesome. So, now we should be good to set this up, I think. Did the quest... Yeah, see, the quest only had us crafting six. Whereas we needed... Nine, really? Oh, you know what? I only crafted... You actually needed seven, but uh, I think I misplaced some somewhere. I think I might have left them in the thing or something, but I still would have needed one more. So, um, And then anyways, we bring our pipe casings up like that, and then we just have to basically fill all this in now, I think. That. And I think all this is in the same chunk. Yes, it is. So this should be formed, yeah, large bronze boiler. You can see our temperature is 0 out of 500 degrees Celsius. Steam output, 0 millibuckets per tick. I believe, unless it's different in this pack, if it goes above 500 degrees Celsius, I think it explodes, I believe. Um, so we definitely don't want that to happen. We definitely don't. 
But then what we're going to do is we're going to attach pressurized fluid conduit. Um, actually, I'm not going to have it extract just yet. Well, actually, let me let me see something here. I set that to extract. Okay, yeah. The temperature is going up, and uh, once it reaches a certain temperature, we'll start producing steam uh, with this. And we're going to be pumping in creosote. We're going to burn just creosote in this. We're not going to burn um, any of the cold coke. You can input cold coke over here, but this should actually run once I get... I'm going to have to get this ran over. What does it take to make these? Conduit binder is standard. Fused quartz is in the blast furnace. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, let me pop down here real quick. I don't think we're going to need any more uh, creosote than what we're producing from this. If we find that we need more stuff, we can add cold coke to it. Uh, but I think it's going to be plenty as is. Let's go ahead and grab that. And I'm going to grab this just in case. We might use that drum as like another buffer or something. Um, but anyways, what we're going to do is we need to pull out this right here and we're just going to bring it out like that and uh, we'll put a stone drum here which that'll probably change to something else as another buffer um, but anyways we'll go ahead and start extracting that it's going to pump it over into here and this is going to start building up and then we will extract here and we'll clean all this up a bit more later on. But but you can see this is draining. It's going into here. And this is cooking this stuff down. And this. <clears throat> extract. Extract. And we'll see how it does. But you can see the boiler is starting to heat up. That's empty. And this should be producing cold coke now. It is. It is running again. And this is producing charcoal. Awesome. Okay, so we should be in business. Um, this seems to be good. It's staying um, pretty well filled up. And this is building up on temperature. Oh, and you know what? Let me, uh, let me break this. I forgot. Actually, I don't even think we're going to need an item input for this. But we're going to let that uh, build up a little bit here. You can see it's building up cold coke. I'm actually going to wait to plug that up until I get the rest of the stuff plugged up because I don't want anything to happen or me get DC'd or not be able to log on or something and, I don't know, just something happen because I'm really not ready to run it just yet. I need to get um, a couple things. First up, um, even though the quest had us crafting these, I do need to make another fluid input hatch. Uh, let me get, because we're going to need water for this. Let's output, that's input. So we're going to get another input hatch. And then I want to get, um, I want to get an aqueous accumulator maybe. Uh, there's a recipe here that takes a redstone clock, a uh, fluiduct, okay, that's not too bad, a uh, fluiduct, which is lead plates, and then we're going to need some wrought iron plates. Okay, let me go get that. Which I should probably get this stuff set up before I even bother turning it on because we're not going to be making any steam right now anyways. Um, I am going to, I think, leave the <clears throat> the item input hatch just in case. Um, I think this is going to run and be self-sufficient, but I could be wrong. And so I don't want to burn my bridges, so to speak, before um, I get across them. So I'm going to leave that. It does, it's not hurting anything. Um and then long term we may actually find that we want items plugged up to that. But basically you can pump in um, a fluid as your input to heat up. For example, oil, things like that. Of course, we're going to be using creosote. And then you can also um, pump in items. So we could pump in charcoal or cold coke um, to make it. But what we're going to do is we're going to keep all of our cold coke. We're just going to burn the creosote from this. Long term, there will be uses for creosote, but we can always make more creosote. That's not a problem. But having something that's just basically producing just large amounts of coal coke as extra um, is going to be, I think, worth it, worth having. So, Especially because that's what we're using to make steel. And, uh, yeah, it'll just be nice to have it. So, 
Um, okay, so the fluid duct. I need... I made nickel plates. I actually only have one of these. Which is enough for what I need it for, but it means that I'm going to need to uh, go mining for lead. Uh, here soon. <laughs> very, very, very soon. Maybe even this episode soon. We'll see. Then I'm also going to need to get two servos. Okay, so our accumulator. There's our fluidux. And let me grab one of these. And grab this redstone clock. Not really using that melter much at all anymore. There is our aqueous accumulator. Okay. And then I need to get a couple buckets of water. Which actually... Um, for water, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take an Everfull Iron up there. And we could set that up and just bucket it out. Okay, so if I was to... Um, let me remove that. Let me remove that. I wonder if I could put the aqueous accumulator right here. Put the input hatch there. I wonder if that would work. And then say, you know, you output to the top. And let me set this up so we can start producing a little bit of water. There we go. That should be good. Um, and that's pumping water into here. So if this will form, then that'll mean that we're good. We'll put water there. Okay. That should be plenty, um, in truth. So we'll just put that there. Um... And before I plug this up, one other thing that I want to get is some servos. I'd like to get two of these, so give me just a second. Okay, so let's take and put our servos right there. Ignore. Ignore. And this should start pumping out the cold coke. There it goes. Perfect. Okay, now we should be good to, to start this up because... Our steam is going to get output here. We've got water coming in the bottom. We've got our creosote coming here. We have our input bus for items just in case we decide that we want them. And we'll go ahead and just put that there. It kicks on. Perfect. That means it's registering that water down at the bottom. So the firebox casings. Looks like we can just change out anything that we want to. Okay, so this thing's going to have to heat up, uh, which is going to take a minute. And it's going to slowly eat through this creosote. That's fine. Okay. We should be good to go. Okay, so that's at 30 degrees Celsius at the moment. So we'll let that sit for just a second. And then the steam that comes from this, we're going to need to pump this out. And um, Let's see, do we want to go with a better pipe, maybe? Because right now we're using bronze pipes. Um, but technically we could probably bump it up to, like, steel pipes. Um, okay, so the medium ones. It's six for two. Or, let's see, what do the mechanism ones move? A thousand millibuckets per tick, pump rate's a hundred. Advanced. Pipe seal. I'm also not sure if I just want to make a dynamic tank to store up the steam. Which might not be a bad idea. Either. Let me toss in like 10 of those. Oh, my ever full urns. I should probably set this back up. Since I'm not totally done in this area. Okay, well let's pop up there and see what it's doing right now. Make sure that it's it's running good and it's making it should be making steam by now. So I'm hoping to get everything just moved over there. Uh, here in just a second. Yes, we are producing steam. 550 millibuckets uh, per tick at the moment is what it can output. Of course, it's not really going to be outputting much at the moment. You can see it's already backed up 16,000 on steam. Um, but that's how much steam we're going to be able to output. 
uh, at the moment. <laughs> it's insanity. It's a huge upgrade from what we were doing before, which was, of course, we're still running on, I think, small steam coal boilers, which is 150 millibuckets of steam in 25 ticks. Now we're producing 624 per tick. Huge difference. Huge, huge difference. Um, okay, so I need to figure out how I want to move this steam over. We're going to be making like nearly a thousand millibuckets per tick when this is done. Which honestly, these right here would probably be our best bet is make these and then upgrade them for the enriched with the enriched alloy that we get from that quest and get a couple of these advanced mechanical pipes. Uh, we actually got some pipes. I can't remember if they were mechanical or not. Let me pop down here and find out real quick. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to pump it into like a big dynamic tank that stores up the steam and then we'll have lots of steam available. But I'm going to have to make those dynamic tanks. Um... We got advanced mechanical pipes. Okay, so that's actually what I need. And I actually don't need probably more than that, uh, in truth. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the dynamic tanks, which there's actually a quest, I think, for this right here. They want us to make 20 dynamic tanks and a dynamic tank valve, and they're going to give us uh, some more pieces for that to actually allow us to finish it up really, really nicely. So the dynamic tanks, these are steel plates and iron plates with red alloy cable, and they want us to get 20. And then the valves are in the alloy smelter dynamic tanks with integrated circuits. See red alloy cables, we've got that. Okay, so let's get our 20 dynamic tanks, and then we need to get the dynamic valve, which is quite simple. Um, there it is. We're going to make ourselves a big steam tank. Basically, using all these dynamic blocks that we get, we're going to make ourselves a really big steam tank. Um, okay, so it was like that and that or something. Yeah. And we'll get that smelting up. I like the reward for this. And the structural glass, what is it? Uh, so I think I can check it from here. Steel plate and reinforced glass gets you four. I might find myself wanting to make some more of that. We made some of that, like, I think it was last episode or whatever, but... There we go. There's our dynamic valves. And then we get 10 structural glass, 10 dynamic tanks, and another dynamic valve. Yay! Oh, the only thing is, can we make a configurator? Oh, we're going to need canning machine. I have to see if we can um, extract this stuff though. That's going to be the biggest, the biggest uh, hurdle now. I think those pipes are nice, but I don't know if we can do it. Maybe with the crescent hammer or not. Um, okay, so this is actually at 500. Okay, so maybe it doesn't explode whenever it goes over. So we're producing 900 millibuckets per tick. Yay! And we've got creosote. We've got creosote. Beautiful. And you can see it's actually. Um, I think it's going to sit steady at this and keep us filled up on creosote, I think, now that it's heated up. Because I think it, it consumes a little bit less whenever it's heated up, I think. Don't quote me on that. Either that or just going to stay right in there, uh, one or the other. Okay, but if we set up our dynamic tank, and we'll just pull off this little section here. And we set up our dynamic tank. Uh, maybe here and do which will expand the size of this later on but so this does 16 buckets per block of internal space okay. I'm probably gonna have to make some more of those dynamic tank blocks steel and iron okay But let's see what we got first. So I'm going to put that there. And maybe we'll just do like a 2x2 two two interior for now. And then we'll do our valves. One's going to go 
here, one's going to go here. This is all going to change as the tank gets larger and all that. Um, it will change, but... Um, or actually, let me, let me set it there. And then we'll do our structural glass there. Structural glass there. And then we'll just put this one down so that we can actually use it. Uh, right here. So, okay. So I need more um, more dynamic tank blocks, real quick. But it's going to be producing almost a bucket of steam every second, or every tick. I mean, so almost twenty buckets per second. Oh, I love it. It's wonderful. Okay, I'm going to need. Uh, I've actually got iron down there. Okay, so dynamic tanks. There we go. There's twelve more. I might actually need more of them. Not sure. We'll see. And let me grab our wrench and our crescent hammer because we might need... I don't know if we're going to be able to change up those pipes from mechanism before we get the configurator. I'm not sure. Um, okay, so let's pop up here and we'll just fill this in right now with uh, those... Yeah, I'm going to need one more craft of dynamic tanks. Okay, there we go. And this tank's its really not going to hold a ton of steam right now until we make it larger, but that's okay. Um, because our production's so high, we really don't even need a tank. But I just, I kind of want a tank. Uh, so there we go. And the multi-block is formed. And you could see, uh, looks like we can hold 64 buckets. So then what we're going to do is we're going to attach... Our advanced mechanical pipes. We're just going to run these over like that. And it's going to start filling this up. Pow. Um, oh, wait, what? No, this, this quest isn't right. 16 buckets per block of internal space. No. It's not 16 buckets. Okay, no, volume, it, if it's at 64... It's counting not just internal space, but all space. Because there's 64 blocks. Yeah, that's what it's doing. And we are currently up to... It's hard to count all these, like, zeros when this is moving. Uh, 2 million... 2.3 million millibuckets of steam already. So it's like... It's just charging through that tank. Awesome. Okay. And creosote, uh-oh, creosote is down. Okay, it looks like we're actually going to need another, which I don't know. I don't even know if we'll need to now that I think about it because it might drop the temperature a little bit and shut, like, toggle on and off. Um, so it's going to drop down to, say, 400. But if it toggles on and off, I don't think that's going to be an issue. I might watch it for a minute. Because, I mean, it's not like we need 900 millibuckets per tick of steam. If we were making 800 millibuckets per tick of steam, that's still okay. You can see it just kicked back on. Um, and I don't know if it's really worth the resources to bump this up further. It's not like I have to run this at full temperature constantly. So I actually don't think we'll need it. I mean, this is already backed up on steam. We have 4,096 buckets of steam in here. Awesome. Awesome stuff. And we've got two and a half stacks of cold coke. That's not bad for not even using the cold coke that we are producing. It's really not bad at all. And you can see this drops down the temperature. And then at about 485, I think, is when it kicks back on. Because basically it's just toggling on and off whenever the cold coke gets produced. There we go. It's, it's rising temperature again. And it's going to rise to almost 900 or 500 degrees. Then it's going to drop back down. Or no, 490. Um, but still, I mean, that's not bad. And I'll let this run for a little bit and keep an eye on it. But I think it's going to be okay. Uh, especially since it's just running off the creosote. Okay, so what that means is... Let me pop back up here. I'm just kind of cleaning some stuff up. And I did check, and this, these wrenches can't make that extract, but I have another idea, so. Um, 
let's pop down here. Let's grab our steam turbine. Grab that. And we got a quest complete. Basic steam turbine. Uh, which is going to get us three enriched alloy and steamed spinach. See what they did there? Steamed spinach. And, and we're going to expand on all of this here very, very soon. But for right now, I'm just going to have the one steam turbine. I'm probably going to end up making quite a few of these. Or a few of these. Because we've got plenty of steam production. But what we're going to do is we're going to pump this out with that. Pump it into that. And then we'll just run this out to say right there. And then we can say extract there. You're going to insert. Steam is in there, it looks like. And then if we take our steam turbine and we plug this up, boom, there we go. It's full on steam and it's ready to go. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Okay, and so then, which I don't think machines explode in this pack if it rains on them because I don't have everything built yet. Let me check that real quick. Okay, it doesn't blow up machines in this pack. Daddy77 Gaming uh, let me know because <laughs> I couldn't remember. I've, I know we've talked about it. I just couldn't remember if um, it blew them up in this pack or not. Uh, let's see. So we're gonna we're gonna set up some cables, and I don't know if we're gonna stick with the ones that we've got that annealed cable or not. There's red alloy wire which has a zero. Oh, but that's ultra low voltage ULV. We don't want that. Not to say that would be great. Silver. Oh, that's HV. But technically, we could run it through HV, and that wouldn't be a problem. Because you can run it through higher uh, voltage and amperage. Yeah, we'll go with the 10 cables, actually, because they only have a one loss uh, per block, which isn't too bad. Okay, so let me, let me actually grab that. Oh, wait, I forgot. <laughs> I don't have anything plugged up to this anymore. That's fine. Let me go ahead and grab our wire mill. We'll grab that. Yes, that's two uh, loss per block. The bending machine and the lathe. We'll go ahead and take our basic machines uh, upstairs. And then uh, I'll take the macerator too. Whatever. We're going to be setting up new auto ore processing here in just a minute. so Which is exciting. Very, very exciting. Okay, so if we run our cables out... And, and actually, I'll probably use the valve that's on this side, pump it out to another steam turbine, and have our ore processing system over there on its own dedicated line, I think. So the wire mill, uh, we'll just put it right here. The bending machine, the lathe, we've got the macerator here. Bending machine, we're going to put that in there. Okay, and now, you know what I should be able to do? I should be able to just make things and not have to worry about how much steam I've got available and how much power I'm producing and all that. Um, because, for example, like making the, let's see, 10 cables. These would eat through my power like crazy. Making these on the wire mill, it's only 8 EU per tick. Let me remove this because these are just kind of wasteful at the moment. And I need a forge hammer and a furnace and an alloy smelter and all these things I need them uh, but if worse comes to worse I can just take the machines up there and plug them up to the steam line um, until I get that stuff made so but let me grab um, let me grab a little bit of tin because we're gonna need some uh, tin cables anyways but look at this not even touching this it can it can't even come close to uh, using that up I don't need more string. Okay. Well, anyways, um, I've got a macerator. I need to get a forge hammer. And then I also need to get another turbine. Yeah, let me make some turbines real quick. Okay, I'll be back here in just a little bit. I'm going to get some stuff made up and prepped up and all that. Okay, it's actually been a while. And I have been stretching out the materials <laughs> as best I can. I literally have three iron to my name. 
Um, basically because I'm trying to be as resourceful as I can and not process. I haven't processed any materials since I last cut. I did get all the iron from our exploration, um, as well as an iron block that had come from our exploration. And, um, and I've used literally every bit of iron that I could find because I've been making so much steel. Um, but I have some things set up here and we're going to make a few machines. I also went mining. Uh, you can see my Thaumium pick. I did some pretty good damage to that. Um, but I did mine up quite a bit of an iron vein. So we've got a lot of malachite, which of course that's copper. But banded iron, brown limonite, yellow limonite. Uh, we've got lots of this stuff. And I'm going to go back and mine more. But I was like, okay, I'm ready to start processing some of this. So we have some iron running. Um, and also, if we pop upstairs just really, really quick. Just to give you an idea of how long it's been. Um, it's been about... 17 hours since we set this up and we have 64 stacks of cold coke and this is still running perfectly and you can see I've actually got an alloy smelter and a macerator set up here because I need to make glass dust and some miscellaneous alloys and stuff um, over here but uh, this is still kicking away so this has this has withstood the test of time and uh, we have it's still setting right about 500 um, it's staying it doesn't drop below like 480 and uh, sometimes it goes all the way up to 500, just depending on when the creosote comes in and everything. But uh, it's it's plenty of steam for, for our needs. So you can see it's actually about to hit 500 right here. There we go. Um, and then it'll drop down. Uh, like I said, the lowest I've seen it drop down to is about 480. Uh, the low 480s, like 482 or something like that. Um, and I have watched it quite a bit. And this is running. I don't know the rendering. They're not rendering right. but um, And I did get another mineral tree grown so um, and you can see we're good on all these counts this did drop a little bit it dropped to like 41 stacks that's why I grew the second mineral tree which mass critic let me know I never even knew this mineral saplings will not grow if there's another tree within six blocks so I had to kind of space this out but I got another one grown and it's actually increased our wood production by quite a bit so um, but this is all running good and so far still no garbage being created which makes me very, very happy. <laughs> it does indeed, because there was so much garbage coming from our other um, setup. So, oh, and we did uh, complete a quest over here on supply chain management, um, because I did craft the basic logistical transporters, because you need those to craft um, more of the uh, mechanical pipes. So we, get, we actually get a configurator. So I'm glad I didn't make one of those. And then we also get enriched alloy from making uh, basic mechanical pipe. So those two quests are done. And then if we pop over to here, and let me dump that into there, we have some things laid out. So, and this is basically as, as far as I could stretch the iron, I stretched it. And we've got uh, some advanced mechanical pipes, yay. We also have a basic centrifuge. And oh, and I made two steam turbines as well. I made two extra steam turbines. So we've got our macerator, uh, we've got our centrifuge, we also have a forge hammer, we have an alloy smelter, we have an electric furnace, you can see I'm working towards an ore processing system, we have an ore washing plant, and we have a CEU LV. Okay. And then another thing that I want to get just really, really quick, um, I've got some tin wire in here. And I think, um, I don't know how many of these I want to make. Let's go with like seven. We're going to make seven two times ten wires. Which eventually we'll want to upgrade these to better um, amps. But they can move two amps, which is basically, uh, they can move... Uh, like, well, we'll talk about it here in a second. But basically, they can um, move the power from, say, two steam turbines. So I can have multiple machines on the same line running. I'm out of string. Okay, let me pop over. Let me go get some string real quick. And I'm on the server right now with a bunch of people. <laughs> with a whole bunch of people. This is a little bit closer, I think, to prime time, I would say. Um, well, prime time was a few hours ago, but... Um, this is a very active time of the day, so. Normally, I'm more of like a midnight player. That's just when I tend to play. 
but I actually finished up some of the stuff I had to do, like my real life stuff. I finished up earlier and I've been working on some stuff. Okay, so let's warp back and let's go ahead and get our two times 10 cables. Let's get, there's seven of those. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to want, I think, is um, 70 millibuckets per tick. That would actually be fine. Let's make a few more of these small bronze pipes. And whatever I don't use, that's fine because I can use them in making machines and stuff. But we'll make uh, 15 of those. That should be fine, I think, uh, for what I want to do. And this is kind of a this is kind of a temporary setup. I don't think our ore processing system is going to stay here because eventually we're going to have multiples of all the machines, and we're going to have more stuff added to it. Probably next episode we're going to do some of the logistical um, stuff for this. I don't know if we'll make it to the Nether or not. We'll see. We might go to the Nether next episode, or we might work on this a little bit more. Um, we shall see. But anyways, um, what I want to do is I want to set up a ore processing line. <clears throat> and basically, ore processing, uh, of course, the last thing that's going to happen is the electric furnace. So we'll go ahead and set that. Um, I'll tell you what, we'll put the electric furnace right there. And if we take a look at the, let's say, malachite ore. This is when we're going to start using a lot more machines. So basically what we're going to do is we are going to pulverize it. And then after we pulverize it, we're going to wash it. And you can see we actually get some secondaries. Um, for example, malachite, we get the purified malachite ore, but we also get three tiny piles of copper dust and a piece of stone dust. So every three malachite that we make, we get a free copper. Okay, free copper ingot. Um, and then the stone dust, we'll have some uses for that later. We'll have more than we need of that, though, so we will start voiding that. Um, and then after that, let's see, after we wash it, it's going to get, uh, if we had a, if we had a uh, you know, one of these higher ones, like the macerator, we could get the secondaries, but since we just have the pulverizers, um, or the, I mean, the macerator, the basic macerator, um, it's when we get up to the pulverizer when we can actually get the secondaries. But um, we're only able to get one output, so it would be the purified pile of malachite dust. So what we're going to do is we're going to run it through a forge hammer. Um, and then we're going to centrifuge it. So then from that, we would get malachite dust and then three tiny piles of brown limonite, which once that's processed down, we can get a little bit of iron nuggets. Um, but then we get our malachite dust, and then it smelts. Okay. So it's a little bit longer of a line, but we're going to get a lot of... We're going to get a bit more secondaries. So, And the nice thing about washing your ores is they're actually faster to centrifuge if you wash them. So the stuff will take a little bit longer to go down the line, but it will be better um, doing it this way as well, though. So we're going to... Um, I'm just going to line up the machines for now. Um, even though we are going to have some spaces in between that, we'll get into that here in just a second. Um, so we've got the centrifuge. The alloy smelter is actually just going to set over here. So I'll just add it uh, to this line. That's just to make my life a bit easier. And then, let's see, the centrifuge. We're going to have the forge hammer. We're going to have the ore washing plant. We're going to have the macerator. Okay. And then the ore washing plant is going to require that we pump in water. So that's what I brought these pipes over here for. And we're actually just going to use bronze pipes to move that water over. Um, I was going to make another aqueous accumulator, but guess what? I didn't have the iron for that. So, okay, there's the aqueous accumulator. Right, yeah, right in there. Okay, so I'm just going to pump that out of the bottom. And we'll say, configuration, you can output out the bottom. So that's filling up with water. Yay. And I think it should have plenty of water because that steam boiler is not really even using that much in truth. So we'll just run this back and then we'll plug it in right there. Okay, so that's got water. You can see it's building up right now. Um, these things don't move water at a super fast rate, but the nice thing is the ore washing plant, uh, if you take a look at the if you take a look at the crushed ore, um, centrifuging it, it takes or not centrifuging it, washing it takes 20 seconds. Um, and then if we have distilled water, it takes 15 seconds. So, um, 
But distilled water, I don't think we're going to get into that just yet. It's actually not that bad if we had a distillery, um, but it is another power consumption thing. So we'll get into that later, but not right now. It's not a big deal right now. So I'm thinking the aqueous accumulator should be able to move water over fast enough that it's not going to matter. Um, we will, though, long term, we will have another um, aqueous accumulator that's dedicated uh, to our oil processing area. But for right now, yeah, it's not really draining the water. The main priority I want is the boiler, but these things aren't going to move water nearly as fast as what that thing can produce, so I don't think it's going to be an issue for us. Um, and this should all be in the chunk loaded area. Yeah, it's all in the chunk loaded area. Awesome. Okay, so then what we can do is we're going to set up our steam turbines. And we're going to have these setting, say, right here and here. That should be good. And then we're going to pull out steam from this and pump it into there. Now, we need to be able to set this to extract. So what we're going to do for that, that's what I've made the CEU for. We're just going to plug this up. We'll just put it setting right here. Okay, and then what we can do is we can take a configurator, put this in there, and it's going to start charging. Because basically what the CEU does is it changes um, your Greg Tech energy into RF, um, which allows it to charge this up. So then we can take this and we can shift right click, and we're going to set it to pull, and there we go. It's now filling up the steam turbines with steam. And so realistically, we could now remove this instead of having it be the way it was we can have it do that and then it'll pull the steam out and then did we have that issue over here or did we not no because it auto output there so um, okay so yay we got that <laughs> and then what we're going to do um, is we're going to run our 10 cables and we're just going to go pow 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 Pow, pow. Okay. So each of these are producing, uh, you know, 32 or whatever um, LV power. Um, and then it's it's outputting, and I'm using this wire because if I use it on this wire, this wire can only transfer one amp. So it, um, it wouldn't be able to move but one packet of power at a time, whereas this can move two packets of power. Um, so, you know, both of these are, are being effective in the system, right? Um, so if, for example, this machine and this machine are both running, you know, it's got power. Um, I will want more of these to run this entire system, but but for right now, two is going to be fine. So I get more iron, basically. <laughs> That's my big my big thing right now is I'm, I have like no iron to my name. Um, but you don't have to worry about the amps blowing up your machines. These can only accept one amp of power, so they're only going to be able to accept one amp coming out of this. So basically what one steam turbine's making, but that way I can run multiple machines on this one line. Um, the only thing you have to worry about when it comes to burn, uh, blowing up your machines is your voltage. You don't want to pump higher voltage into a machine than what it can accept. Um, okay, so now what we can do is, um, let's see, the macerator, whenever it macerates stuff, let me actually, let me pop downstairs. A couple of these things are just going to immediately pump into the machine next to them. Some of them, will that will not be the case. So let me pull this up. Okay, it's on the other one. Okay, so what I want to do, let's pull this. Oh, no, I didn't mean to pull that one up. That's not the one I wanted to pull up because that was building up on water. Whoops. I'm definitely going to want to dedicate aqueous accumulator, I think, because I just don't think this is going to move water fast enough. But I'll get one. Once I get some iron, I'll get one. So that's going to be one of the first things I do. I'll do that after, right after this episode, basically, uh, once I get the, the water that I need. Um, but anyways, what we're going to do is we are going to, is it shift? No, left control. We're going to hold left control, and we're going to right-click this on. And so basically it reverses it. So it's pumping out in this direction. It's pulling from this direction. We're going to put our macerator back down. There we go. We're going to put our macerator back down, and then if we were to grab, say, banded iron, for example, let's dump some banded iron into here. Okay, this is going to start macerating, 
And it takes a second. It's not the fastest thing in the world, of course. But as we get better tiers of machines, we'll get faster machines, you know. Uh, but right now we're just at the LV stage. Okay, so it's made some crushed banded iron ore. And then it's going to come over to the ore washing plant. And one day, then you can see this is pretty slow because it's like, what, 20 seconds or something um, going through the ore washer. Uh, 16 seconds. I'm sorry, 20 seconds. Yeah, I was looking at the usage. Uh, 20 seconds for this to run. So very, very slow. Ideally, you would want a few of these basic ore washing plants and be using distilled water. We will move to that, but not yet. <laughs> not yet. Okay, so there we go. We've got some purified banded iron ore, tiny pile of banded iron dust, and stone dust. And then the next thing will be the forge hammer. So what we're going to do, we're going to pump this stuff out because this stuff is going to need to be compressed and then basically direct smelted. Um, and then we're going to have stone dust, which is basically just going to get stockpiled and then get voided. Um, what I would really like to get for this, which I'm not sure if we can get it yet, but I would love to get a memory chest. We could actually do it with a basic assembling machine. Can I use basic, uh, okay, we'd have to get to where we're making the good circuits or the integrated processors. Okay, that's a little bit, uh, we'll get into that before long. But for right now, what we're going to do, this is going to be semi-manual for right now. You know, it's it's a work in progress, but we're getting there. We're getting, we got actually got a lot of progress done today and last episode and We'll be getting more progress. Not to mention we can start into the autoclave soon, which will be exciting. Really, we could start into it as soon as I get some iron, but there we go. Item translocators. We can use these. Um, you can also make these. They're not that expensive, but um, this is actually just going to be temporary. I'm not going to leave these plugged up because they're very situational items. But for right now, what we're going to do, this you can see this is washing. We've got seven purified banded ore Tiny pile, uh, 21 tiny piles of banded iron dust, and we've got seven stone dust. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a flat transfer node on top of this. And we're going to put a, let's set this up. And it's so nice being able to dump materials in here and not worry about them. Like they're going to, they're going to get crafted and they're not going to run out of steam or power or anything. Um, I mean, they might run out of power, but if they do, they'll just, they'll, uh, build back up but you know it's not a big deal but we're going to put a chest right here and it's going to start dumping the items from that into here so there goes the purified banded ore and then once it, it, it empties that it's going to start emptying out the tiny piles of banded iron dust and then the stone dust and see from here what we what we could do is we could separate this off have this get sent over and get compacted um you know in in one of the auto crafters or in a packer. Um, packers aren't terribly expensive um, on power and they're probably not very expensive to build. Well, they do take robot arms, uh, which aren't too bad, just a lot of steel and then rubber sheets, which we'll start getting into those soon. But anyways, this will keep up just fine for now. And then what we're going to do is we need to send the stuff over to the forge hammer. And before we do that, let me go ahead and Pull this up for just a minute. And the forge hammer, we are going to send it. We're going to go ahead and put a flat transfer node right here. And it's on there. It's just not rendering. And then we'll put the forge hammer there. And so then what we can do is put our item translocator here. Oops, shift. And then an item translocator here. And basically all they can move is stuff in a one block space. And what we're going to do is we're going to set a filter and we're going to say, which this will need a bigger filter for this. We'll get into that later. Right now, this will be fine. So we're going to say purified banded ore. But anyways, we can push this. Uh, I'm sorry. Not that direction. We can push this in and you can see it sent all the purified banded iron into there. And it's now forging, forge hammering that down. And that's all it's sending over. Okay. And it's not sending the rest of this stuff over. And that's what we want to see. And then if we look over here, the centrifuge is starting to run. You can see it's actually not taking that long because the nice thing is the centrifuge, um, it only takes 6.4 seconds. If you don't wash it though, 
Like, for example, if we take a look at the banded iron ore. Okay, so we've pulverized it. And if you go straight into the centrifuge, say, from pulverizing, it takes 32 seconds, right? Uh, if you forge hammer it and then send it to the centrifuge, it takes 24 seconds. But if you wash it, if you get purified, and then you centrifuge it, it only takes 6.4 seconds. So major time saver right there um, if you do that. And now we have banded iron dust and tiny piles of banded iron dust. And so then what we're going to do is we're going to pump this out. This is where I'm going to need another flat transfer node. Uh, for right now, what I'm going to do is... Let's see, I'm going to need some more steel before I can really progress. This stuff smelt and makes three nuggets. Okay, I'm just going to throw this into the electric blast furnace real quick and get this smelting up because I need some more steel. So there we go. And it's faster than our old electric furnace. I'm also going to want an electric furnace for my personal use as well, uh, which I'll get that set up here soon. Okay, so there's three ingots worth. And this is going to take a second, but give me just a minute. I want to make... Um, two flat transfer nodes, and then I'm going to need uh, something to move the items to here. So, I don't know. The logistical, I want the logistical transporters, but they're so expensive on iron right now. I don't know. I'll figure something out. Um, I mean, I could always make another servo or something, but I'll be back here in just a minute. Okay, I went ahead and just sucked it up and got basic logistical transporter. Yay. <laughs> okay, so let's head back upstairs. And now we can change all this over. We don't have to do servos anymore, which is nice. Because servos were a little bit expensive. Of course, we could start making them two at a time with rubber sheets, but there's better uses for those, I'd say, than uh, rubber sheets. Oh, I did add uh, bronze chest and whopper here so we can feed in items. Of course, I'm not feeding in items just yet, but uh, we will here in just a moment. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to pull this up. Well, no, let me wait. Let me wait on that. Um, let's put a flat transfer there. And we're going to put a bronze chest here. And that should start pumping the items out. It is. And then we're going to put a basic logistical transporter here. Um, the only thing is we would have to make a logistical sorter to be able to filter these. Which is not ideal. <laughs> Let me uh, pull this up for just a minute. I don't know if that's what I want to do, is make a logistical sorter. I mean, they're not terrible to make. There's just so many things I need. Like, I really need an aqueous accumulator over here. Because that's where, that's what's slowing this down so much. Like, it would be able to process these metals quite a bit faster. Um, but it can't because it's waiting on very slow water transfer. So I'll tell you what, these really aren't that expensive. I basically just need the five iron more than anything. Um, or I could just make item translocators for now. Because they have filters. And then once we overhaul this, we can make it a little bit fancier. So the redstone alloy ingot is just iron and red alloy ingot. You get two. And I just need one craft. Yeah, that would be a bit better for now. Oh my gosh, I had flat transfer nodes right here. No, <laughs> that's fine. I didn't even notice those. Okay, so there's our piston. And then I need to get the... I know my inventory is awesome. That's okay. We need to get the red alloy. Not a problem. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and just break this stuff down into nuggets. And uh, we'll get this crafted up. There we go. There's two item translocators. And then what we can do is we can put this there, put that there. We'll grab a piece of this banded iron dust, and we're going to add this to the filter. Of course, this only supports nine things, but once we get the full system in place, we're going to have space for it all. It's just basically I need to get my materials built back up because I have nothing to my name at the moment. And then we're going to right-click there. It's going to pump that in. And then we'll add a flat transfer node right there. And I have to pop downstairs and uh, basically that copper chest that we used to have for the output, I've got I've to empty that and move it up here. Actually, I've got a dolly. I can just move it with the dolly. 
Okay, and then we'll plop down our chest. Oh, which is crashed the game. Okay, so there we go. Uh, this should be running. And let's see, this is washing something. This will, Like I said, this will be a bit faster because if you notice, it's going to finish this and it's only going to have like 300 millibuckets. So, I mean, I'm, I'm into waiting like a, a minute per craft. Um, but anyways, that finishes up. You can see something just dropped into there. Went to the forge hammer. Forge hammer is really, really quick. And then it goes in the centrifuge, gets broken down, starts smelting. It's all very, very fast. And then there we go. We'll get three more iron nuggets. Awesome. And then, of course, this builds up. And then right now I have to manually compact this, but we'll fix that uh, soon. I don't know if it'll be next. I'm not for sure if we're going to go to the nether next episode or if we're going to refine the um, ore processing system next episode. Uh, we'll see. But then I can grab, like, all these things. And, of course, I will have to update, fil update filters for this stuff. Um, but like, for example, the banded iron, there's 33 in there. We can just toss a bunch of that in there and there we go. It's building up. So yay. And then let's see yellow limonite, brown limonite and malachite. There we go. Okay. Um, and of course, this only has space for nine things. That's going to be four of those nine things already. But um, it's not like we're using that many different materials. I mean, that covers copper and iron, which are the big things. And then, of course, we'll have to add tin, probably gold and, you know, some other stuff. But I am going to, like I said, once we get some more materials built up, we'll overhaul this even more and um, add filters and auto packaging and all that stuff. So... Uh, we actually might go to the nether next episode, so that way I have time to kind of repair my resources. The nice thing is it being on a server, I can just mine like crazy, fill this chest up, and if I need to, I can add another chest with another whopper or whatever um, and have more storage or upgrade this to a steel chest and have more storage. But but yeah, it can just it can run, which I'm actually going to turn off the chunk loads for those chunks because I actually don't need those chunk loaded. Um and honestly, this one here, I don't need, yeah, I don't need any of this loaded or any of these for that matter. So really, I only need this two by two loaded and then I've got my farms loaded, but technically those don't, well, those really do need to stay loaded, but yeah. So all of this is in a two by two though. So, and really it could be even more compact if you wanted it to be. I just don't care about making things super compact. But yeah, so anyways, I'm going to work on, I'm going to let the materials build up. I'm going to stick an aqueous accumulator directly under this basic ore washing plant. Um, and then probably do like a, maybe a mechanical pipe that pulls it up and sends it up into the ore washing plant. But like I said, eventually we're probably going to have multiples of these because uh, the macerator doesn't take very long. 10 seconds but it macerates five at a time, so it'd be nice if we had a bunch of ore washing plants because the forge hammer, the centrifuge, and the electric furnace are all pretty quick. Maybe have maybe two centrifuges or something, but that's going to be down the road, so we'll have to expand a bit. But we are getting lots of lots of other stuff. You can see, is, did it, is that what it made? I thought it made copper. Or no, we were looking at malachite whenever we saw that. So I've actually got banded iron dust here too. So there we go. There's 11 more right there. See this stuff, it's going to build up actually pretty quick. And then I can just come over here and compact it for now. So, but okay. So anyways, I'm going to end out this episode here. Uh, next episode, when we come back, chances are we'll probably be going to the nether because I would like to check that out. But um, we'll see. It just depends on where my resources are and if I feel like I'm at a position. I really don't feel like I'm going to be at a position because I have like, I have, like, one steel ingot, and then whatever iron I've produced from that banded iron, you know. So, I don't know. It'll probably be, we'll probably go to the nether next episode, because that's not going to, well, I say go to the nether. It's going to be a little bit more than that, because we have to actually get the nether blocks um, to go to the nether, which requires that we start getting into a little bit more astral sorcery than where we are, and doing some other stuff. So, we'll see. The liquid death we've already got, because dungeoning, but... 
um, which is good that we've already got that because we have like 90 buckets of that. But, um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe. I'll see you guys then.